Welcome to another mythology video. So you've never heard of number walls? Well, you're definitely not alone. I'd say 99.99% of professional mathematicians will not be able to tell you what a number wall is. And that is really, really amazing considering how powerful, visually appealing and accessible number walls are. So today's mission is to do something about the sorry state of affairs and let the world know about number walls. To start with, I'll give you a crash course on how number walls are built. They use as oracles and their mysterious square windows. I'll then follow up in the second part of the video with all the fun gory details. And as usual, at the very end, I've got some pretty spectacular animations and music waiting for those of you who made it all the way through. Finally, there's also a coding challenge in the description of this video, another opportunity to win one of Marty and my books. All right, now let's jump straight in. Here's an example of a number wall. Well, not the complete wall, but part of it, as indicated by the dots. But what's so special about this wall of numbers? Well, let's see. First of all, at the top of any number wall, there is a row of ones. Actually, there's also a row of zeros above the ones, but since we'll only need those zeros later, we'll keep them out of sight for the moment. But what makes this wall of numbers an officially sanctioned number wall? Well, it's the peculiar way in which neighboring numbers are connected. Have a look at this cross. The red number on top times the red number at the bottom, one times minus one, that's minus one, red times red minus one, plus green times green, so minus one plus two, that's one, is equal to the square of the blue number in the middle. And that's true for every cross like this in a number wall. Red times red plus green times green equals blue squared. Nice! Here's another example. Red times red, 2 times minus 5, that's minus 10. Green times green, 5 times 7, that's 35. 35 minus 10 is 25 and 25 is equal to the blue 5 squared. Works! <laughs> now, using this fundamental number wall rule, we can figure out how this patch in front of us continues beyond what's displayed. For example, here, what's that green number on the right? easy. <laughs> red times red plus green times green equals blue squared. Red times red is 2. Green minus times question mark is minus question mark. Minus 1 squared is 1. Solve for the question mark and there our question mark is a 1. And actually that's how these walls are built. You always start with the row of 1's at the top, then choose any sequence you like to go in the row underneath. And now you grow the whole wall row by row using the cross rule. There, use the cross rule to figure out the question mark. Again, 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 over and over. <laughs> Once the third row is complete, grow the fourth and so on. And so this number wall is really completely determined by the sequence of numbers in the second row. And so it makes sense to call it the number wall of that sequence. All very pretty, but what's the point? <laughs> well, the point is that the number wall turns out to be a very powerful tool to analyze that initial sequence of numbers. In particular, number walls are the ultimate what comes next oracle. What do I mean by this? Well, suppose your mortal enemy taunts you with part of a mystery sequence, like that one up there, and then issues the dreaded what comes next challenge. What's the next number? Well, knowing number walls, you'll often be able to find the, in some sense, simplest possible formula for extending the partial sequence forever. If you're a mythology regular, this may ring a bit of a bell. It's something I touched upon on a video a couple of months ago about difference tables, that one there. And it's true, difference tables can also serve as what comes next oracles. But actually, Number walls are quite different in nature and in many ways are much, much more powerful than difference tables for playing this game. Anyway, let's have a look at some famous sequences and their number walls. First, here's the sequence of squares. Its number wall looks like this. Very interesting. The wall becomes all zeros after just a few rows. Okay, what about the cubes? Unleash the crosses and we get this. Aha! The cube wall also becomes all zeros. 
and the same turns out to be the case for the fourth powers, the fifth powers and so on. In fact the number wall for any polynomial sequence will eventually turn to all zeros. Actually very similar to difference tables. What else? What other simple number sequences are there? Well what about the mega famous Fibonacci sequence? There, one, one, two, three, five. Two consecutive terms always add up to the next number in the sequence. One plus one is two, one plus two is three, two plus three is five, you know the drill. <laughs> Unleash the crosses also becomes all zeros real quick and that's very different from difference tables. Now it turns out that for every sequence of numbers that has a zeroing out number wall like this <laughs> we can find a simple formula. And here is how we can find that formula. Look at the two there. What's the Fibonacci number that comes before the two? Well one right? Now replace the two by two minus one times x. Why? <laughs> Don't worry about the y for the moment, just run with it. Now 3. The Fibonacci number that comes before 3 is 2 and so we write 3 minus 2x instead of 3. Then 5 minus 3x, 8 minus 5x, 13 minus 8x and so on. Got it? Great! Now just go on autopilot, unleash the crosses and build the number wall with what's in front of you. Bit weird since we are no longer dealing with just numbers but no big deal either since we are just doing basic arithmetic when we apply the crosses. Here's what you get. This new wall becomes all zeros at the same level as the original number wall. Just for fun check that the cross rule is really satisfied everywhere. There red times red plus green times green really equals blue squared. Same here and so on. Ok now the formula we are after is just one step away from any one of the quadratics just above the zeros. Before taking that final step in figuring out the Fibonacci formula, let's set up the square sequence as a second example. Ok, start with the 1. What's the square number that comes before 1? Well that's 0 squared so that's 0. And so we replace the 1 with 1 minus 0 times x. Next 4. The square number that comes before 4 is 1 and so we write 4 minus 1x. Next 9 minus 4x. 60 minus 9x and so on. Next come the crosses and there's a polynomial just above the zeros. Ok so we have these two polynomials the one for the squares and the one for the Fibonacci numbers. Mm -hmm. Now I will show you how formulas for our two sequences are hidden inside these two polynomials. To extract these formulas set both polynomials equal to zero. Now solve for the largest powers of x. There solve for x squared, uh -huh, not so easy, <laughs> and here solve for x cubed. Nee, and that and isn't algebra autopilot fantastic. <laughs> ok if f sub n is the nth Fibonacci number then we get the familiar formula for the Fibonacci numbers like this. Just slide them in. The nth Fibonacci number is the sum of the two preceding Fibonacci numbers. There. Ah. That's a nice animation isn't it? I've never done this before. Just occurred to me this time around. Now what's the formula for the squares? Strange question. Obviously the formula for the squares is n squared right? <laughs> yes but that's not what the number wall produces. At least not directly. Have a look. Let's call the n square s sub n. Then we get the following formula. According to this formula the n square is 3 times the square before that minus 3 times the square before that plus the square before that. Really? Let's check that for n is equal to 4. 3 times 9 is 27, 3 times 4 is 12, 27 minus 12 is 15 plus 1 is 16. Works! Let's check a couple more examples. There again the autopilot. Ooh, nice. <laughs> yep it's all working. And an easy challenge for you prove that the formula really works in general. Leave your thoughts in the comments. So the squares are also a type of Fibonacci number sequence. Who would have thought? And the same is true for the cubes. Here's the number wall formula for the cubes. Well since animating the formula so far turned out so nice let's also quickly look at this strange cube formula in action. They're sliding through again nicely. All right very pretty. In fact there are Fibonacci like formulas for all powers of n n to the power 4, n to the power 5 and so on. Another challenge for the clue among you, what are the number wall formulas for the different powers? Here's a hint, 
Have a close look at the squares formula and the cubes formula. Don't the numbers in those formulas look terribly familiar? Well, all really pretty. But it's time to get back to our mortal enemy. What about your enemy's mystery sequence? Well, put a row of ones on top. And now run the crosses over the partial wall to extend it as much as possible down. Ok, all zeros in row 5, so looking good. Now recast the second row by inserting the x's as much as possible. Crosses again, there. That's a polynomial that gives the formula we are after. Ok, let's do the rest on autopilot. There, that's a nice and simple formula that fits the part of the enemy sequence that you were confronted with. <laughs> now, if this really is the formula that your enemy had in mind, what's next? Easy peasy, just plug the final three numbers into the formula. 185 minus 124 plus 3 times 86, that's 319. Wonderful, your mortal enemy is vanquished. Here are three more fantastic number wall facts. Fantastic fact 1. It turns out that the sequences whose number wall become all zeros are exactly the sequences that are given by a Fibonacci-like formula, what mathematicians call a recurrence relation. I'll tell you why this is the case in the last chapter of this video. Fantastic fact 2. The squares, the cubes, etc. and in general all polynomial sequences are of this type. So are the exponential functions and many more. Pretty amazing, right? Number walls are really much more powerful than the difference tables that are discussed in that other video when it comes to playing what comes next. Fantastic fact 3. All these special number sequences not only have recurrent Fibonacci-like formulas, they also have one of those function formulas that we usually associate with the word formula, right? If you ask anybody what the formula for the squares is, they definitely won't give you this recurrence formula. <laughs> Answer. Obviously, they'll say the formula for the squares is mm, n squared. So of course the squares have a function formula, but what I'm saying is that all the sequences whose walls zap to zeros, all the sequences given by Fibonacci-like recurrence formulas, also have function formulas. And what's extra cool is that you can also extract these function formulas from the polynomial equations produced by the number wall. Those ones there. The equations are called the characteristic equations of our sequences and the function formulas are pieced together from all complex solutions of these equations. The translation process is a bit tricky and going into details would a bit of a distraction from what I really want to talk about today. So let me just mention that the function formula for the Fibonacci numbers is Binet's Fermi's formula, the one there, and that the two numbers in the brackets in this formula are the two solutions of the characteristic equation. Also the formula for the squares produced by this translation process is, thankfully, <laughs> the ordinary everyday n squared. Same for the cubes, fourth powers and so on. I'll include a link to an accessible account of the full translation process in the description of this video. Anyway, in summary, any sequence expands into a number wall and if the number wall becomes all zeros, then wonderful things happen. Oh, and just for fun, let's check what the amazing online encyclopedia of integer sequences can tell us about your mortal's enemy sequence. There, I entered the part of the challenge sequence given to us. Push search and we get… hmm, nothing. <laughs> Alternatively, if we use the difference table approach that I talked about in my earlier video, we do get a formula that spits out our mystery numbers. But the formula is very far from simple. Here it is. Sub n1 spits out 1, sub n2 spits out 2, sub n3 spits out 4, works all the way up to 185, believe it or not. <laughs> but what a scary formula. And so, at least in my book, the number wall has won this particular what's next contest hands down. Long live the number walls, may they never crumble. <laughs> Now, before I dive into the why all this wonderful stuff works, here are some more weird and wonderful facts about number walls. First and foremost, number walls have windows. Wait, what? <laughs> yep, they have square windows. Here's what I mean by this. Take any number wall. As we've seen, a number wall can be all zeros from some row on. 
It turns out that any other zero in a number wall is either surrounded by non-zero numbers or is part of a square of zeros. Here's a pretty extreme number wall featuring lots of those other zeros. There, a couple of isolated zeros surrounded by non-zero numbers and apart from those isolated zeros all other zeros form squares. <laughs> Actually as far as mathematicians are concerned an isolated one is just a mini one times one square and if in a number wall it's all zeros from a certain row on well then those zeros make up an infinitely large square. And so as far as mathematicians are concerned zeros in number walls come in squares. Period. Anyway square windows. Pretty mysterious. And there is more. Much much more. Take any prime number 2, 3, 5, 7, etc. Then the numbers in a number wall that are divisible by that prime number also come in squares. And for many number walls patterns built into a base sequence can give rise to spectacular patterns in the arrangements of these squares. In fact our very first example in this video, the so-called pagoda sequence wall, that wall there features some pretty amazing square action. Let's have a closer look. Let's highlight the numbers divisible by 2, the first prime number. So we're just highlighting the even numbers. As you can see all the even numbers in this patch are either isolated or occur as part of a 3 times 3 square. Things get really interesting when we zoom out, leading to the image featured in the thumbnail of this video. It's gorgeous isn't it? But there's more. Scaling from the upper left corner by a factor of approximately 2 highlights a spectacular self-similarity of this pattern of even number squares. Check this out. Very very nice. Now let's start again highlighting all the numbers divisible by 3. Very, very different. <laughs> In fact, it's possible to prove that all the numbers divisible by 3 are isolated. Now start again with 5. Square windows are back and this 5 window picture exhibits the same sort of stunning self-similarity as the even number windows picture. Have a look. Fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> and one more. The next prime number is 7 and we're back to isolated zeros. It's been conjectured and in general for all prime numbers of the form 4n minus 1 like 3, 7, 11 and 19 we only get isolated zeros. But no one knows. So as another challenge for you, no not, not even the mythology is that mean to issue a challenge like this. But for the real maths demons among you it's something to ponder. Prove the Pakoda conjecture or find a counterexample. Anyway all this was intended just to whet your appetite. If you're interested in more spectacular number wall square magic, check out the articles linked in the description of this video and the animations at the end. Confession time. <laughs> I spend all my time watching cat videos. Well no, but I generally confess building those number walls is actually not quite as simple as I described it at the beginning of this video. Problems arise whenever zeros materialize in a wall. Let me also quickly tell you what those problems are and how they can be overcome. Ok, let's go back to the point where we built our first number wall. We are extending the wall using the cross rule. Red times red plus green times green equals blue squared. As advertised there is no problem doing this when it comes to the first new row. Ok. Continuing with the next row all is well up to here. And there's the problem. Two steps below the zero we cannot use the cross rule to calculate the next entry in the wall. Why? Well let's transfer the numbers in the cross into the rule on the right. There. Red question mark times zero that's zero. Our question mark has disappeared and so we obviously can't solve for it anymore. Bummer! <laughs> and you get the same problem two steps below any zero. Looking at our patch of numbers there are a bunch of these zeros. And in fact all the numbers two steps down from those zeros were not calculated using our cross rule. Those numbers were calculated using a second type of cross rule which works like this. First draw a new type of long cross centered at one of those troublesome zeros. What's the rule? Well there are two blue, two red, two yellow and two gray squares. And now the rule goes like this. Outer yellow 
times inner yellow squared plus outer blue times inner blue squared equals the same thing with the other two colors. How do we use this new rule to calculate the problematic number? The one there? Well easy. Since we know the remaining numbers we can solve for this problematic number. Okay that seems to work but how can we be sure that the next number, the number next to the problematic number will never be zero which would foul up things as with the simple cross. Well the reason is that this number is right next to the zero in the number wall. There and as I already told you for isolated zeros all neighboring numbers are non-zero. That means we do not divide by zero when we solve and all is well. Okay don't stress if you got a little bit lost here. The takeaway point is that the problems with isolated zeros can be overcome with the long cross rule. Of course the still awake among you will have noticed that even the long cross will not be of any help when you're dealing with a large square window of zeros. With a large square window of zeros the problematic entries, the entries we cannot get to with the two crosses are the entries in the two layers below the square. So is there a third cross we can use? Nope. Instead there's a horseshoe. <laughs> the rule that takes care of these problematic entries takes this two layer horseshoe of numbers around a square of zeros as input, right? We can get the green numbers easily and then the red ones can be calculated from the green ones. Originally I wanted to skip the details of this calculation and just refer the super keen among you to a write-up. But then I tried an animation of this calculation just for fun and it turned out quite nice. So let's do the whole thing. Won't take long, it's totally going to be worth it. Here's a sample neighborhood of the 4 times 4 square of zeros taken from some number wall. There. If you stare at these numbers for a little while you spot some pretty remarkable patterns. In particular notice that the window is bordered by geometric sequences of numbers. Sequences that grow by some constant factors. Here at the top the constant factor is 2. There multiplying in the direction of the arrow 1 times 2 is 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16 times 2 is 32. Here on the left the constant factor is minus 3. On the right we have, <laughs> not so obvious this time, but you can check that we have a factor of 2 over 63 going up. And at the bottom the factor is minus 1 over 21. It also turns out that the four factors together satisfy this simple equation. Very pretty <laughs> and this will actually be true for any zero square window of even dimensions 2 by 2, 4 by 4, 6 by 6 and so on. For windows of odd dimensions the only difference is that the one on the right side of this factor equation turns into a minus one. Now when we calculate the wall we know all the green numbers and therefore we also know three of the factors. That is we know all the factors except for the red factor at the bottom. Correct? But since we also know the pretty factor equation up there, we can solve this equation to also get the red factor. Getting there. Anyway, now that we know the red factor, we can get the four problematic numbers in the bottom box. Here we simply start from the green number and repeatedly multiply by the red factor. Very nice. <laughs> proving that there are geometric sequences bounding the square of zeros and proving the factor equation is actually really easy. You only need our first cross rule and the fact that windows are square for that. Maybe give it a try yourself. Okay deep breath almost there. Four more problematic numbers remain to be puzzled out. Let's focus on the problematic number on the right. This number can be calculated using a sort of broken cross rule which ties together our four factors and eight of the numbers in front of us. Those eight numbers. And here's the rule. Nice and symmetrical. And now as usual we can solve for the problematic number that we're after, that one there. And all the other problematic numbers are calculated in a similar way. There, there and there. And that's it. That's all you need to build even the most exotic number wall. A lot to take in and all very quick of course. I definitely don't expect you to have understood everything. Still very enjoyable to see this animation and very satisfying to see how everything around these windows hangs together. Don't you think? One quick remark before I move on. 
remember at the very beginning of this video I mentioned that number walls have an extra row of zeros at the top. Well, that extra row is needed whenever there are zeros in the original sequence. Because then a cross or horseshoe used to take care of this zero will extend above the row of ones. Have a look. There, move the thing up. There. When the input sequence contains zeros, like here, the horseshoe pokes one row above the ones. Okay, it's all great stuff, but where does all this number wall magic come from? The cross rules, ability to detect sequences of Fibonacci-like formulas, square windows, etc. To finish off this video, let me now show you the very pretty origins of number walls. This explanation will work best for those of you who know a little bit of linear algebra, in particular determinants. Now, my friend and professional nitpicker Marty reminded Ivory Tower me <laughs> that there are actually people out there who have never heard of determinants. Shocking, really? Well, just kidding. <laughs> anyway, I better give you a 30 second summary of what I'll use determinant wise so that we're all mostly on the same page. Okay, square blocks of numbers like the one over there pop up in many parts of mathematics. The determinant of a square block distills all its entries into a single number. For example, the determinant of this block happens to be zero. In many different scenarios, that single number will give remarkably deep insights into the nature of the whole block. Yes, there's a formula to do this to calculate a determinant, but no need to worry about that here. Just accept that the determinant can be easily calculated. The important fact for us is that the determinant of a block is equal to zero exactly if the rows of the block are linearly dependent. Meaning that one of the rows can be written as a linear combination of the others. For example, the rows of the block over there are linearly dependent because row one is equal to row two plus row three plus row four. Easy to check. And as I already mentioned, the determinant of the block is zero. Eyes glazing over? <laughs> Don't worry, just run with it. Let's start with the mystery recurrence sequence from earlier. The one thrown at you by your mortal enemy. Remember, its formula turned out to consist of four consecutive turns. Four consecutive turns and so we'll also color in the sequence with four colors, like this. Green, yellow, blue, cyan, green, yellow, blue, cyan and so on. Now create a total of four copies of the sequence and shear these copies like this. Okay, now any four consecutive turns of the sequence also repeat from top to bottom like this. Okay, there, top to bottom and flat and flat and top to bottom. So in any vertical box like this, we have that the number in the first row is equal to the number in the second row minus the number in the third row plus three times the number in the fourth row. And since this is true for every vertical box, it makes sense to say that the whole first row is equal to the second row minus the third row plus three times the fourth row, right? Very pretty. The top row is a linear combination of the bottom three rows. Aha! Linearly dependent. Rings a bell? Among other things, this tells us that the rows in this 4 times 4 block are also linear dependent and therefore the block has determinant equal to zero, as does this one and so on. Zeros all the way along a row of zeros. And this simple insight immediately suggests an algorithm for systematically checking whether a given sequence has a Fibonacci-like recurrence formula. The algorithm runs like this. First, write down a few copies of the sequence staggered like we just did. Okay, now calculate the determinant of this 2 by 2 block and note the resulting number underneath. Calculate the next determinant and so on. Now we calculate the determinant of this 3 by 3 block of numbers and record the result. Shift and so on. On to the 4 by 4s. There is 0 which means that one row of the 4 by 4 block is a linear combination of the other rows. Now if you keep getting zeros as you process all 4 times 4 blocks, this suggests that all rows may be connected in the same way and that therefore the sequence we are dealing with has a Fibonacci-like recurrence formula. In fact, given the very special setup that we're dealing with here, with those staggered repeating rows on top, 
it's not hard to prove that ending with a row of zeros guarantees that there is indeed a Fibonacci like formula underlying our original sequence. And this is the origin of our number walls. In fact, the area of numbers at the bottom is the number wall of our sequence. The only thing that's missing is the top three rows the rows of zeros and ones and the row that contains the original sequence. Hmm, it's a bit surprising, isn't it? <laughs> now, the only really serious drawback of this method of number wall generation is that calculating determinants of large blocks is computationally extremely expensive. Luckily, on closer inspection, mathematicians discovered the simple pattern produced by the stacked copies of the input sequence implies the cross and horseshoe rules. Here the two cross rules have been known for more than 100 years, while the complicated horseshoe rule was apparently only discovered around 1975, simultaneously but independently by British computer scientist Fred Lunen and French physicist Marcel Froissart. Using the cross and horseshoe rules to generate number walls is much, 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 much faster than using determinants and as a result, number walls can also be calculated and investigated to much greater depths. Nonetheless, when it comes to proving general properties of number walls, it's usually much easier to work with determinants. For example, it turns out that if you start with an integer sequence, its number wall will also consist of integers only. Why this is the case will be completely obvious to anybody who knows determinants, since determinants of blocks with integer entries are always integers. On the other hand, this fact is not obvious at all if you think of number walls as being generated using the cross and horseshoe rules. Why? Because in this cross, for instance, solving for the rest question mark involves a division by the other red number. And so at first glance, we would expect to see some fractions appearing in the number wall even if we started with an integer sequence, which never happens. Similarly, actually proving that a number wall ending in a row of zeros corresponds to Fibonacci-like formula and to actually figure out what this formula is, is pretty straightforward if you think of the number wall in terms of determinants. But not so when you restrict yourself to thinking only in terms of the cross and horseshoe rules. And so on. <laughs> anyway, that's plenty enough for me for today. Let me finish by thanking Fred Lennon for inspiring me to make this video as well as for all his help with nutting out the details. I'll leave you with a few more mini animations of some particularly nice number walls from one of Fred's papers. Enjoy! Actually, I am always right, except when my wife's around.